Hello, everybody. Welcome to this breakout session on protecting data with AI and securing data to AI applications. My name is Vairavan Subramanian. I'm Senior Director of Product Management at Zscaler. The Zscaler data protection platform is a comprehensive platform that looks through multiple channels, both for data in motion as well as data in rest. We focus on five channels, so data in line, data sitting at rest in SaaS and public cloud applications, data sitting at rest at endpoint and getting transferred to endpoint devices such as printers, USBs, and so on, email DLP, as well as DSPM and data security posture management. The first part of our data protection platform is a comprehensive AI-powered discovery and classification for all data across all channels. We provide discovery of what kind of data it is, which applications is the data going to, and giving you complete context across it. For data in motion, all data going to your public cloud applications, SaaS applications, as well as internet-bound applications. We provide full visibility across the data, which application it is going to, and full control across those applications. This control involves both classification, coaching, as well as admin experience. We also scan data at rest, sitting in SaaS applications, public cloud applications, as well as data sitting on the endpoint itself. AI-powered classification. We're making a fundamental change in how data can be classified. We're moving away from just simple regex or EDM, IDM, OCR, the legacy techniques, and adding to it ML-based classification. This ML-based classification provides contextual classification for both text as well as non-text-based data. First, for text, we have a new BERT-based contextual engine which understands the complete context of the data. It's not looking for specific keywords, patterns, regex, but it understands the meaning of the document, the meaning of a particular sentence in the document. That way you provide very great accuracy and no false positives. For image analysis, we use a blip v2 classifier which understands an image. Rather than looking for a particular driver's license number, it looks at the context. Does it look like a driver's license? Does it have a picture of a bear? Does it have a picture of a human being? Are there lines of text written in it? We have improved our classification to include new categories across source code, technical documents, legal documents, diagnosis, prescriptions, and much more. We have expanded our data protection capabilities as well as expanded the ML capabilities to support non-US geographies as well as non-English languages. Our ML classification also provides feedback. So we, if something has been misclassified, an end user or an administrator can provide feedback to say it has been misclassified. You can also provide classification from a customer-defined corpus of categories. That means you as an admin can provide a list of documents to learn from, and based on that, we will provide ML classification and protection. We also provide different thresholds to define the ML classification in your policy. So let's take a simple example. For example, in a traditional DLP classification, if you wanted to classify a financial document, maybe you started with a simple regex for the word bank. The first sentence is a financial document. It says the borrower hereby agrees to repay the loan in full to the bank. So this is something you might want to classify. But the word bank can also occur in other sentences. For example, we had a great party on the river bank. The plane banked to the left before it landed. The bottom two cases are typically what are false positives, and you do not want these kind of alerts. This is the bane of regular expressions. Now, with our new ML-based classification, we understand the context. In the very first sentence, we understand bank refers to a business establishment that is used for saving money or for commercial purposes. In the second example, we understand bank means the land along a river. In the third example, we understand bank means inclining or tilting. So here from a full context perspective, the first sentence will get classified as a financial document, but sentence two and sentence three will not get classified. By using this machine learning, we provide greater accuracy. We also provide visibility instantaneously without 
a customer or an administrator to define predefined policies. From an image perspective, in this particular case, instead of rather saying it's just a driver's license, you will know this is a Pennsylvania driver's license. It features a man's uh, picture as well as has his personal information. So this is well beyond what is typical OCR where you just extract numbers. Rather, it understands the color, the context, the presence, the count of things within an image. This can be used to detect things like a passport, a check that might be sitting in S3, an image of a check. So again, both the image analysis as well as the contextual ML-based categorization for text data is available in Zscaler across all channels and by default this classification provides instantaneous visibility across sensitive data. Now the AI classification is automatically present in all our inline channels. That means automatically as data is uploaded without defining any policy with zero regex, we can automatically provide you visibility into what kind of data is getting uploaded to various SaaS and public cloud applications. Is it a medical document? Is it a mortgage document? Is it a security and exchanges form? Not only do we classify the documents, but we also give you context across which applications, which instance of applications is this data going to? And from an application perspective, we also provide you visibility into how risky is that application? Is that application evasive? Is it PCI certified or not? This way you can combine the context of the classification of the document and the risk associated with the application to determine the risk of data exfiltration. This provides instantaneous visibility and then you can take policy to take control across what data should go to which applications or application instances, and in other cases, provide both coaching as well as blocking the exfiltration of this sensitive data. On the UI, you can clearly see the total number of files. You can see which applications these files are going to, which users are exfiltrating these files, and you can drill down and get the complete context of the data sensitivity, the application, and the user, and this is a three-dimensional matrix through which you can pivot. We are now newly introducing this AI discovery across our endpoint DLP. The Zscaler endpoint DLP does not require any new agent. It's already built into the Zscaler client connector that is already installed on most of your laptops and desktops. We provide protection across four channels, removable media, printing, network shares, as well as personal storage applications. These may be applications which are SSL pinned and cannot be inspected in the proxy. This protection is provided both across Mac as well as Windows. So this provides the unified data protection across multiple channels. You can leverage the existing DLP policy that you built in other channels such as API, CASB or inline DLP. You have the exact same incident management. You ha have the exact same user experience for the end user and you build your policy once and you deploy it across multiple channels. Now, with this visibility, we can automatically classify what kind of sensitive data is getting exfiltrated. Again, in endpoint DLP, you do not have to deploy any policies. You do not have to deploy any engines. Out of the box, using the same ML and BERT algorithms, we will automatically classify all the documents. We classify both documents, which are getting copied to external channels, such as USBs, printers, network drives, or shared SAS drives. But now, newly, this classification is also available for data at rest. That means if the end user is not copying any data, just data sitting on his laptop will automatically get classified. So across all the Macs and Windows in your organization, across all the users, you can automatically classify all the documents sitting at rest on the endpoint. We've also used AI to make sure that there is no bad user experience where we look for things like low CPU utilization and scan data during those times. In this example, you can see we have 563 users with sensitive data. We show you the total files scanned across all these users, and we also show which files have sensitive data. You can also see a list of users, and for each of these users, you can see how much sensitive data they have. We can also classify the data sitting at rest using our AI as well as ML categories. 
You can get this visibility across the sensitive data. How is this trending across different days, across different users, as well as the distribution by file type. Now, let's go and look at a demo of this AI discovery on the endpoint. Let's take a break here. I'm going to show a demo, and then we'll come back to the slide. This is our AI discovery. Here you can see the list of users, the departments they belong to, the endpoints, how many files they have on each particular endpoint. You can click through a particular user. Here you can see Amr has 56K sensitive files. Uh, he also has two incidents. You, we have a discovery of by the engines as well as by the AI categories, what kind of documents are sitting on his endpoint. Um, you can also see the distribution of these documents by the file type. Um, for each of the files, you get the path and what kind of DLP engines did they match. Um, you can get various activities. Um, and from these activities, you can see where's the data going to. And you can trigger those incidents, which can then be tracked via our incident workflow management tool. So you can see here, you get a full visibility across all the data and incidents associated with this specific user. Now you can also go to the dashboard. The dashboard gives you a holistic view, but you can also export the data in this dashboard into a PDF, and then you can look at this particular PDF. You can give this to an exec to see a trend of the data sitting across all the laptops yeah, in your environment. You can get a trend across the sensitive data, uh, as well as the distribution of file type, different engines and policies uh, which are matched. So this is a quick and simple demo across our endpoint DLP scan. Okay, thank you. I'm going to break here and then go back to the presentation. Let us now take a look at the discovery of data on public cloud. In this example, you can see all the sensitive data which is sitting across your public cloud applications. And this is again through the classification of AI and ML. Here, the classification happens both for structured data as well as unstructured data. So structured data, this is data sitting in various databases. Unstructured data, that is data sitting on your virtual machines, um, on uh, unstructured storage like, for example, S3, Azure Blobs, or as well as your um, any of the disk drives within the virtual machines. Here you can also see that for each of the data, what is the exposure of the data? Is this data publicly available? Or is there a different canonical user in AWS who can have access to this particular data? Um, are there any risky credentials associated with this? So you get the full context of the data. It's also important to mention is that this discovery of data across the various databases as well as storage is available across multiple clouds, AWS, Azure, as well as GCP. You can also look at the list of alerts, and each of these alerts provide you contextual alerts across the AWS role, the data element, as well as the context across the data and the sensitivity of the data. Now let's take a look at how can we secure the usage of Gen AI applications. Most users today in most of our organizations are using Gen AI applications, and one of the risks associated with this is that your sensitive data can be learned by these Gen AI LLM models, and once it's been learned, that data cannot be unlearned. And we've seen this in many data breaches. It is very, very critical that our sensitive data is not learned by these algorithms. First, Zscala provides a comprehensive view of all the Gen AI applications that are being used in your environment how many transactions are being used in this Gen AI applications, what sensitive data is being uploaded to these Gen AI applications, and which users are using these applications. So you just get this comprehensive visibility out of the box. Next, you get an industry peer comparison. How are your users using these Gen AI applications compared to users in other organizations which are similar to your organization? You also get a list of each individual applications that are being used in your environment, how much data is being uploaded, how much data is being blocked or being prevented from being sent to these applications. Now you can get this visibility by applications, prompts, users, as well as data transfer. 
you can see the sensitive data that is being uploaded by apps. That means for each of the categories of data, whether it is legal data, financial data, real estate data, you can drill down for each application such as ChatGPT or Gemini, what kind of sensitive data is being sent to each of these applications. You can also get visibility by which departments in your organization are using Gen AI. Is HR using it? Is marketing using it? Uh, most of the data that you're seeing is resumes which are being written uh, on some of these Gen AI applications. You can get that complete visibility across which departments and then which specific users are using this Gen AI applications. You can also see the prompts, which means by default, you can go and see what data the end user is entering inside these Gen AI applications. From a privacy perspective, we have a setting where whether you want to see these prompts or by default, you do not want to see the prompts. So you have a choice on Zscaler whether you want to see these prompts or not. If you opt to see the prompts, for each of the prompts that your end users enter into these Gen AI applications, you will get visibility across the prompt, both in allow and block modes. You will understand what data is being sent to each of these applications. Once you get this visibility, now you have the opportunity to go and control these applications. So you can filter on a cloud application. So for example, you might want to filter on ChatGPT. And you might say, for ChatGPT, I want to provide controls where certain kinds of data is allowed, but maybe source code cannot be cut and paste. Um, certain kinds of sensitive financial data cannot be uploaded to ChatGPT. So we provide actions both allow, caution, where you can coach the user, where you can block the user, as well as isolation, which is a great option where people can still use these Gen AI applications, but it's through an isolated browser, so like a large piece of code cannot be cut and pasted into these applications. We also provide the context. So for example, if I determine source code is being uploaded to ChatGPT, then I can take an action to block the source code from being uploaded to ChatGPT. I can also notify the end user and also notify an auditor. So this provides visibility across all the Gen AI applications that are being used, and we provide you control across what data can go to Gen AI applications, both from an allow block coaching perspective as well as from an isolation perspective. Your next steps, please get a free trial of Zscaler Data Protection. You can explore our ML-powered discovery, and you can see this across multiple channels. You can gain visibility across your generative AI applications. You can understand which applications are used by which departments, by which users. And once you get this visibility, you can protect your data going to these Gen AI applications. Thank you for visiting this breakout.